resistance and weight loss. Are the two of them best friends or do they have nothing to do with each other? I'm here to tell you that probably what you're guessing. The two of them hang out quite a lot. I know from experience, so tune into this video. I'm gonna share with you everything that I know to be true from my own experience dealing with insulin resistance, conquering insulin resistance and losing weight, and then further what I've been learning more recently about insulin resistance, which is absolutely overwhelmingly fascinating. Can you tell I'm super excited about this video? Tune in to learn more about insulin resistance and weight loss. You're gonna love it. Hey guys, Kelly Alexa here, serial entrepreneur, fitness fanatic, confidence coach, and most recently that I'm a keto convert. Yes, keto convert. So like I said, a little over a year ago uh, with the nudging of my functional medicine doctor, I went keto and I was the most reluctant keto convert at the time. Keto was the one thing I swore I would never do, but guess what folks? It changed my life. Going low carb, doing keto helped me um, lose weight. In fact, 36 inches and 30 pounds off my body when prior to that, I had been working out religiously, fanatically, and dieting in a caloric deficit for the decade prior. And just, let's just be real. I had a membership on the weight loss struggle bus, okay? I could not lose weight. So going keto changed my life. I am now um, living the keto lifestyle, although I will talk about it in this uh, video a little bit and certainly in future videos to come. Keto is not something that you want to do 100, you don't wanna be hardcore 100% keto for the rest of your life and I say that to encourage a lot of you who might be listening going, hogwash, I'm never, I'm not gonna give up and never eat fruits the rest of my life or never eat bread the rest of my life or never eat rice the rest of my life. That's certainly not the case. Keto is a tool and then it is something that depending on where you are with the topic we're talking about today, insulin resistance, you then manage that uh, by manipulating carbs and by manipulating, I guess I would say more so managing it, again, depending on where you are for the rest of your life. So that said, now you know who I am, let's get into the good stuff and let's start talking about insulin resistance and weight loss and what the situation is there and how if you have it, insulin resistance, or you suspect that you have it, how do you deal with it? Let's chat extreme close up. You guys know the drill. Make sure that you're subscribed and also when you subscribe hit that cute little bell button so that you are notified every time we put a new video out. We've got new videos coming out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but still hit that bell so that you know and are always in the know whenever we've got a new video out because you never know when I might surprise you on a Tuesday or a Thursday or maybe even a Saturday. Wouldn't that be crazy? Hey everybody, group hug. Welcome back. I'm saying welcome back to you. It's like welcome back to me too. I've been uh, gone for a little while, but let's talk. Let's talk about insulin resistance and weight loss. First, I wanna bring everybody who, who might be new here, who might be stumbling on this video and you've never watched a video from me before and you really don't have any context of my history or my experience with insulin resistance or my weight loss transformation. So I will first give you my um, experience with insulin resistance, my experience, uh, my weight loss story, and, and all of that up front. And then I want to tell you about, you know, what, what I've learned recently, you know, certainly what I, what I learned through my weight loss transformation, what I learned, you know, kind of up front, what I learned through my weight loss transformation, and then most critically, what I've been learning, I would say, in the past four to five weeks as I've been doing additional reading that has just like opened my eyes so much and just made me so, I, excited is probably not the word, um, enlightened I guess would be the word. Um, 
I mean, it's on one hand, it's it's a bummer to learn that insulin resistance is a much more widespread problem than I realized. Um, in fact, the more that I read, I realized that there are many studies or, or reports out there that are showing that upwards of 80 to 88 percent, and I'm going by memory here, um, of the po U.S. population might be uh, dealing with insulin resistance. That's a lot. Um, so that can be disheartening, if you will. Um, however, just like that, that there's, there's data to show that, there's also more learnings that are coming out on, on how to manage it. So that's all good. So let's start off and talk about um, my, my experience uh, with insulin resistance first. Um, and then we'll talk about, you know, um, what I've learned about insulin resistance and weight loss, how to manage it, um, how you can address insulin resistance so you can lose weight, and then how you can manage it so that you keep the, keep the weight off which is essentially what I'm doing. So, you know, stay tuned to me, follow with me, because that's what I'll be doing going forward is, is uh, applying everything I'm learning so that I can um, not only sustain my weight loss, which I have been doing, which is great, but continue to get healthier. Um, and, you know, cause it's not just about how you look, it's about also how you feel and, and getting healthier and, healthier as you age. This is about health and wellness and longevity, right? I'm 53 years old. I only want to get better with each birthday. I only want to be feeling and looking better with each decade. And I firmly believe that that's possible for all of us. Um, so my um, history with insulin resistance, really the first time that I became aware that I had it was as I began to get blood work done for um, bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment. And that was in, uh, if, I'm, if memory serves, and I will link up to the video, which is one of my most watched, had no idea at the time it would be, most watched vlogs um, is this random video that I put up, you know, kind of sharing my experience of when I, when I first got bioidentical hormones. First got my blood work done and it came back with insulin resistance. Um, now I have to be honest with you, I, my, I've been with three different functional medicine doctors. My first two functional medicine doctors were male. My current functional medicine doctor who has completely transformed my health and wellness and is the one that helped me with this weight loss transformation, um, is female. Now my first two functional medicine doctors did not really seem to focus on the fact that I had insulin resistance. Um, you know, we talked about it, but they never really talked about adjusting my diet. Um, the second doctor that I was with, um, you know, he was a huge advocate for the paleo diet. I tried to be paleo for years. It really did not do much for me at all with regards to weight loss. Um, the people that I tended, freaking, the, the people that I followed that would give me advice, uh, with regards to paleo, I, I felt like I gained weight on paleo. Um, and again, that also could just be the people that were giving me direction. You know, a lot of people in the paleo community are like, don't count calories, just go paleo. Just eat a lot of grass fed beef and a lot of guacamole and, and um, a lot of eggs. And you know, just, you can't not count calories, you know? You've always got to start with a caloric deficit. Um, and, and, you know, later when, if that's not working, then you address, you know, things like insulin resistance, because that's actually what I ended up realizing was, was my issue. But anyway, um, I'm trying to remember when it was, and I'll have to look up when I first posted on my blog, but I knew I had insulin resistance and there was this time when I was running my first company, Fitfluential, when Valerie Waters, who is a celebrity fitness trainer, was um, visiting Chicago, we were doing a photo shoot with her for Fitfluential. She was doing some um, some training, some workouts for our, for our website. And so she was in Chicago and she was staying at my house. And um, 
we were making breakfast one morning and you know, I was complaining. She was, you know, she's a dear friend of mine. And I, I was always, you know, frustrated and embarrassed about how hard I worked out and how, um, how much I dieted. I just thought, I always felt like people were laughing at me and looking at me and going in, in the back of their heads, like, what is wrong with Kelly Alexa? Like she's, she says she works out and she diets all the time, but she, she's so fat. Like that's what I thought people were saying about me because in my head, that's what my self-talk was. Um, I just saw myself as so overweight, so fat, so gross, so disgusting. I know, horrible self-talk. But, so I was always over talking about my condition. And so believe me, everybody knew how unhappy I was with my body, how hard I was trying to get to the right place. And, and so Valerie certainly knew. And, you know, I just would think, well, Valerie works with all these, you know, celebrities like Jennifer Garner and, and, you know, Jason Bourne and, you know, uh, it, big time celebrities. And I just thought she must see me and go, wow, she's a cow. And so here she's staying at my house and we're having breakfast. And she's like, if you have insulin resistance, why are you eating Ezekiel bread? And I'm like, uh, cause it's gluten free, you know? And she's, and I had, at, what I was having for breakfast was two organic, uh, pasture, pasture raised eggs on Ezekiel toast with butter spray. To me, I'm like, what could be healthier than that? I'm having fat free butter spray. I'm having Ezekiel sprouted grain toast and I'm having the healthiest eggs you can imagine, right? On paper, that sounds like the healthiest version of food you can, and she's like, well, Ezekiel bread is, you know, sprouted grain, it's wheat. That's wheat, you shouldn't be having, you know, any kind of wheat if you have an insulin resistance. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So after she left, you know, I'm like, <sighs> and I remember just, my first reaction was, I'm so tired of finding out I'm doing something wrong. Like I'm always finding out that something is wrong with something that I'm doing from somebody, whether it's Shape Magazine or Fitness Magazine or my trainer or Valerie Waters or some other celebrity or someone on Instagram. Like every day you would read something and go, oh, I've been doing this wrong. Oh, I've been doing this wrong. Oh, sweet potatoes are bad for you. Oh, diet soda is bad for you. Oh, steak is bad for you. Oh, you know, have you ever felt like that? And, and you feel like nothing you can do is right. That's how I felt. So that was when I first did research on insulin resistance. And that's when I read that, you know, carbs were, were bad and, and I, you know, I, I don't wanna say carbs were bad, that's what I read. But I remember at that time that I cut out, I did a blog post on this. I cut out potatoes, I cut out corn, I cut out, um, artificial sweetener, I stopped drinking soda, I cut out um, bread, I cut out, you know, gluten, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And within a month, I lost nine pounds. And just, I remember like, wow. Um, I remember I switched from like stevia, I switched to stevia for the first time. And um, it was pretty significant. And then slowly but surely, I, I just, I don't remember why, I don't remember consciously making a decision, but slowly but surely over time, um, I also cut out rice. Um, I, I slowly, you know, added bread back in, I, I added rice back in, I added all of those things back in to my life. Um, and then, you know, it, it, again, it wasn't a conscious decision, I just know that that was short-lived. I don't know why. <laughs> I wish I would have known that the, my insulin resistance was as important a condition, negatively speaking, as I now know it to be because, wow, it certainly stayed with me and came back and reared its ugly head later. So fast forward to just last year, um, I had changed from that doctor to another doctor. Um, I had been through more years of training my ass off, 
dieting, hiring all of these different trainers and coaches and uh, uh, dietitians and blah, blah, blah. And I just, no matter how hard I worked out, no matter how much, I was in a caloric deficit on a nonstop basis. I just never was not dieting. So I was constantly dieting, constantly working out, and I just could not lose weight. I was just so thick around my middle. Um, I was always wearing baggy sweatshirts, um, always wearing hoodies to hide my middle, um, blazers, always wearing Spanx, never wearing shorts. Um, just miserable, absolutely miserable in my own body. Never knew, how, like, I felt like I was in somebody else's body because I'm like, how can I conceivably eat this healthy, this the organic food, healthy food? You know, I'm, I'm just buying the, the purest food I can buy. I'm eating all the supplements. I'm on bioidenticals and paying a doctor and I can't, I can't lose weight. And it's funny because it's not like I was gaining weight every month. I wasn't getting fatter, but I just stayed right at the same weight. And I wasn't weighing myself, but now I know because when I finally did get on the scale, I'm 5'5", five five, um, I was probably staying right about 25 to 30 pounds over what's a good healthy weight for me. So I remember that for me, the last time I was super confident, feeling good in my body. I'm, did I say I'm 5'5"? Five five? I don't remember if I just said that two seconds ago. I'm 53 right now, I'm 5'5". Five five. I, I remember that the last time I weighed 138, that was just a random number, I felt really good. I don't know if that's ideal or not, whatever. Um, I do remember when I got married to my first husband, I weighed 125 and I was, that was too skinny. Um, people just said, oh, you just look way too small. Um, so for me, like 138 was what I was aiming for. So once I hired my now current doctor, um, the woman, Dr. Ruthie Harper, she's located in Austin, Texas. Um, and she spent a little time, several months actually, um, tweaking my hormones. I do remember that the one thing she said to me, I, I asked her, I was so direct. I said, you have to understand, I have worked with two doctors. I need to know that you can help me lose weight. I feel like I'm going crazy. I mean, I, I just, I finally felt like I needed to lay it on the table with her and I said, I feel like I'm going crazy. I'm spending a lot of money with a lot of doctors and nutritionists and trainers. It can't be this difficult to get my body to work like a normal human being. I am a healthy person. I work out, I eat healthy. It can't be this difficult to fix me. Please tell me you can fix me and help me lose weight. And she said, I absolutely can help you. You've got to let me you know, work on your hormones. I, at, the, at the time I was in a reverse diet, she goes, I want you to continue to be on this reverse diet. Take it easy on your working out. Let's continue to, you know, just be de-stressing, you know, calming down. Cause we were working on adrenal fatigue issues too. Um, she said, so continue that. And, and in the, after the beginning of the new year, you know, I'll let you know when your body's ready to diet again. Cause essentially, we had to give my body a diet break, right? I told you I had been dieting for years and years and years nonstop. And remember, you know, one of the things that you'll learn if you're tuning into this video, you know, insulin and, and everything is, you know, it, it's hormonal. <laughs> insulin is a hormone. It, it Everything is tied to our hormones, okay? So, everything with our hormones is interconnected. So when she's telling me, we've got to get your hormones, you know, calmed down and, you know, like it would be remiss of her if she knew that, you know, my adrenals were whacked out and my cortisol was high uh, or too, way too high or way too low. And that maybe my testosterone was low at that point or whatever, like, for, for her to put me on, on the diet 
too early when all those things weren't optimized, everything works together, right? So she, she wanted to get things working right so that when we got the body uh, dieting, um, it would be receptive, right? And, you know, the more that I read, I started to understand why the body develops insulin resistance and why, why your body will start to, I hope I say this right, will start to stop the, the process of fat loss. It's almost like it gives, it gives up. It's like it can't handle. It's like there, there's an overload of, there's so much glucose that's entering. I hope I'm saying this correctly. I'm paraphrasing. Um, there's so much glucose coming in because of the way you're eating. You guys to a point where, you know, your, your, I hope I'm saying this right. Your liver, it just can't process it all. And it's like, okay, I'm just going to stop. And, and that's when insulin resistance happens and you have to reverse that, that process. So that's what my doctor was working on, okay? So when she finally gave me my, my diet and I saw that it was keto, um, that was literally the last thing that I wanted to do. Um, I was so skeptical, skeptical about the keto diet. I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a fad. I didn't want to do it. She had to do a lot of convincing. Um, I had to, you know, I, I, she had me read some books, some, it was really more some articles and some podcasts, listen to some podcasts. Um, and, and all of it was about insulin resistance and, and how women over 40, you know, so many of us because of our hormones, I, I want to tell you, I didn't necessarily understand it all, but I understood enough to realize, okay, she knows what she's talking about and I'm going to take a leap of faith and believe in her. Plus, I also knew a friend of mine who is exactly my age, maybe a year younger, who had just gone keto about six months before, and I'd watched her transform her body and lose weight about a pound to two pounds a week, and, and, and she had been unable to lose weight before, and I'm like, I'm just doing it. I mean, nothing else has worked. What do I have to lose? And it's, I'm so glad I did it because as I said at the beginning of this video, I lost 36 inches and 30 pounds. Uh, I remember hitting 138 and just, and, and I actually got down to 134. Um, I was just like, it's the most shocking experience I've ever had. The easiest weight loss I've ever had. Um, the second that I really did keto and did it the right way, which is, the way that I figured it out. Um, and so many people do keto the wrong way. That's why I actually, I'll link down to it below. Hard plug here. I, I've developed um, a, a course to teach women how to go keto because I just realized so many people get that keto is a great way to lose weight, but they're so lost. And I was lost in the beginning. You know, you, you decide to go keto and I, I bought a couple keto books, but I still was like, what do I eat? Oh, how many calories? Do I? I mean, I knew how many calories because my, I almost said my boss, my doctor had told me, but I just didn't know what to eat. I didn't know what meals to make. I did not know what to do. And I think a lot of people freeze and then they either go one of two routes. They either go the fast food only route or they go the packaged, uh, I'm gonna buy slim fast bars and packaged meals. Um, or, you know, they, they make a bunch like I did. They, they rely on like dips and keto bombs and then they get bored and then they give up and then they say the diet doesn't work or they gorge themselves and pig out, um, on cheeseburgers and junk food and then they gain weight and they say the diet doesn't work. Well, guess what? The diet does work and it can work tremendously well and I'm living proof of that. It also can be transitioned into a lifestyle. Um, and again, I'm living proof of that. It requires a little bit of effort and it can be really, really enjoyable. Um, I've been at it for over a year while enjoying adult beverages, never once cheating. Um, I never even, I, I've never cheated, and I don't even want to call it cheating, until probably the past two months, and that's when my 
doctor was insisting like, it is time for you to start adding high carb days. It is time for you to like, you absolutely have to stop being 100% keto because it's not good for your cells. It's not good for your mitochondria to be 100% keto for that long. Like you got to start doing cheat meals. You've got to start working your way out of this. And she, you know, we'll talk about that in other videos, but keto works. It absolutely helps with weight loss. It absolutely addresses insulin resistance. When you understand what, ins what insulin resistance is, when you understand that insulin is all about, and certainly I'm not gonna go into extensive detail um, in this video, I'm going to talk about it and I'm gonna have a ton of folks on this show who are best-selling authors, doctors, um, fantastic, and I'm hoping, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to get my doctor on here um, to do interviews with. Um, I'm basically planning on taking my podcast and instead of, I just messed up my hair. Instead of doing my podcast and strictly doing a podcast, I'm gonna bring it over here and do video interviews because I think that might be more fun and then we'll maybe take the, take the show on the road and do interviews on the road. Um, but we'll talk a lot more about insulin resistance in detail, but once you understand, you know, what insulin resistance is and the fact that, and I'm gonna make some very general statements here, so bear with me. If, if you are suffering from the inability to lose weight, like I was, like you are working out, you are dieting, and you can't lose weight, it is, this is my opinion, my statement based on what my own experience is, and based on what I've read in these and multiple other books, which I'm going to all link to down below, and I'm gonna reference in just a second here as we wrap up. It is my strong opinion that you that is highly likely you're dealing with insulin resistance, and that you should definitely do some research and reading on insulin resistance. And you should absolutely look into a low carb and or keto lifestyle on a temporary or semi-permanent basis to address your insulin resistance because it freaking works. You will feel better faster than you can possibly imagine. You will absolutely lose weight because when you understand more about insulin and glucose and you understand the foods that cause an insulin response that you know carry that high glucose load it's like when i look back at the things i was eating like the amount of acai bowls i used to have and, and the more i've learned about like I'm gonna do a whole video on like why acai bowls are the most deceptively unhealthy food on the planet. <laughs> it scares me. Um, it's, a, it's such a bummer. Um, they're so good. But it's like, they're, they should be just like labeled a Twix bar or something. It's just so deceptive. It's such a bummer. Uh, I digress. But um, you realize why the keto diet works so well and like why when you do it the right way, and again, there's a, wrong, a right way and a wrong way to do keto. And, and that's what I teach in my course. I mean, every single woman who's taken my course, who's been coached by me, whether they've tried keto before and had a problem with it, whether they've tried keto before and gained weight, every single woman has had success. I just had one of my new clients, she's lost 16 pounds in their first four weeks. Results not typical, results not guaranteed. I feel like I have to be one of those infomercials and say that. Plus my course is only $99 by the way. And um, you get lifetime access forever. It's just ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's, it's all video, it's self-serve, um, you watch it whenever you want. And then there's a Facebook group where you get to ask questions whenever you want, any questions forever. You'd be crazy to not do it, um, to not pick up on it. So I'll link that down below. Um, insulin resistance is absolutely tied to weight loss. And if you're trying to lose weight and you're stuck, you can't lose weight just like me, you need to research insulin resistance. You need to research low carb and keto. Of course, heavy plug. I'm going <laughs> to highly recommend you look at my course. Feel free to reach out to me if you have questions. Um, but what I'm going to tell you in closing is 
obviously I know from experience that keto perfectly, like I just said, addresses insulin resistance. And, and once you get into keto, you start to realize you're like, okay, this just naturally removes everything that was creating an insulin response, everything that was raising my blood sugar. And, and then it takes, and then it takes away your cravings too. And then it's like, you, you just, you realize how much crazy sugary stuff is out there. And then your whole, your whole life changes because you're removing all of that stuff that's keeping you addicted, that's causing headaches, that's keeping you from sleeping. I mean, there's just at keeping you bloated. I mean, that was one of the first thing I noticed when I went keto, I wasn't bloated. I didn't have stomach aches all the time. I wasn't getting headaches like I used to all the time. But I do want to tell you too, in closing, I referenced this at the beginning of the video. I have started doing more reading. I mean, I'm just continually reading up on keto and fasting and insulin resistance. And the books I've started to read the past probably five weeks have just like, blown my mind. I'm going to link all of them up below. So, um, the, the books that I started to read first were strictly about keto because I wanted to understand I'm getting my keto coach certification. And so I was reading those first before I started my certification. And so first I read by Dr. Joseph Mercola. Um, I think it's called keto fast. That's about keto and fasting. That's an excellent read. Then I read Gary Tobes, the case for keto. That's an excellent read strictly. Again, it's like all facts and studies about why keto works. It's fascinating. Then I started to read Jason Fung's The Obesity Code. Um, this is so, I mean, I pretty much underlined the whole book. Um, there's so much information in here and so much is about insulin resistance. And then because of that, I stumbled on um, Ben Bickman online. He is an expert in insulin resistance. This whole book is about how insulin resistance is literally tied to virtual, it's not even virtually, every disease, it is at the root of every disease that is in existence. You can ha ha find insulin resistance at, so the, the importance of addressing insulin resistance, not just for weight loss and obesity, but for disease prevention could not be more important. Um, and then I read before those, before that one, I read uh, Gary Tobe's other book, Why We Get Fat. My doctor recommended this one, even more reference to insulin resistance. And then I, <laughs> as you can see, this will blow your mind. This is written by a scientist, not a dietitian, not a doctor, not a trainer, but a scientist all about glucose and insulin and your blood sugar and this will blow your mind i have made more changes in my life um because of this because of this book i'm drinking apple cider vinegar every day because of this book i'm taking oh steve and i are taking a walk after every uh meal after every dinner with our dog um because of this i am making sure that we start our meals with a vegetable because of this. I mean, it's, it's just, it's mind boggling what she's uncovered about glucose and, and, and also just how you can manage, um, eating. If you want to be able to eat more carbs and, and, and kind of have treats, you can, by eating foods in the right order. And this isn't about food combining, you know, like like back in the day when they would say, oh, eat fruits by themselves. And you know, it's not that. This is different. This is somebody who has studied the impact of foods on, you know, your blood sugar and measured, measured them very specifically based on the order that you eat them. And then there's just, there's so much goodness in this book and it just, I read it and then I read it again and then I read it again and I'm just like, oh my God. And then her Instagram account has so much good stuff in it and I'm gonna chase her down and see if I can interview her because it's just amazing. So all of these books, strongly recommend you read them, but ultimately here's the big picture. My own experience, 
obviously made me a strong advocate to spread the word about insulin resistance and that, you know, hey, if you're stuck, whether you're a man or a woman, but particularly if you're a woman 40 plus, if you're trying to lose weight, if you're running, if you're working out all the time, if you're dieting and you can't lose weight, you really, really, really should consider that you, it's highly likely you could be dealing with insulin resistance. And if you're dealing with insulin resistance, then a low carb keto lifestyle could be life changing for you. And you should look into it. Don't just take my word for it, but look into it. But I'm also happy to help you in that area. And I'm like walking, living, breathing proof. And, and again, keto doesn't have to be for life. It shouldn't be for life. It's something that can be used as a tool to lose weight and then you modify it depending on where you are after you've lost that weight. You modify how much you're, you're gonna be manipulating your carbs later on. Um, and then lastly, what I'm learning is insulin resistance is much more widespread than we realize. And as such, all of us really should be taking this whole carb situation a lot more seriously should be taking how much sugar we we intake uh, a lot more seriously. And, and the great thing is, is that there's, there's ways to do it. Um, and frankly, there's so many more options as far as what to eat instead of sugary foods. Do I feel did not, like my life is lacking because I'm not having cupcakes and cakes and cookies every day? Absolutely not. I've never felt like my life is lacking. Um, there are so many choices. And when you learn about something like, I just learned how to make a low carb smoothie bowl the other day by using avocados instead of bananas. Cause I can't have bananas, not only because they're higher carb, but I found that bananas make my skin break out. Go figure. You learn something every day. You tweak, you adjust. There's just so, <laughs> That's what YouTube is for. That's what YouTube is for. You learn, you, you learn how to do things differently. Isn't social media great? I hope this was helpful for you guys. I would love to hear what questions you have about insulin resistance, about weight loss, about uh, if I can help answer any questions about my um, my keto boot camp. My keto cookbook is down below. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind is oh. I forgot to tell you, I'm doing a series because of this topic. Um, you know, one of the things basically that I started to see, I will say this is, this is my closing, and I put this in my notes and I forgot to say it earlier. Um, one of the things that I saw in common in all of these books, um, that was a theme uh, that all of these authors brought up is um, when addressing insulin resistance, um, everybody recommended, um, and this was in, in common too in every, basically every article that I, I re read about insulin resistance. What was recommended? Low carb eating and or keto, intermittent fasting and or incorporating longer fasting, like 24 hour fa fasting, exercise, specifically lifting heavy and you know, cardio, but high intensity cardio, you know, not like long um, 60 to 90 minute cardio, you know, n nothing like that. Stress reduction, better sleep. So based on that, I am going to be doing a series after this video. My next five videos will be on these topics. I will be doing video number one, low carb changes that I'm making in my life because I am making changes in my um, low carb um, diet. And I'll be detailing those out, how I'm upping the ante with my low carb life, things that I'm, that was really weird. There was, <laughs> you guys, there was a little, <laughs> there was a little piece of fluff in the air and it looked like my dog was home and that freaked me the hell out because nobody's in my house right now. <laughs> Number two, um, fasting changes. Um, I'm, I'm changing, uh, making some uh, changes with how I'm fasting um, from intermittent fasting to incorporating 24 hour fasting and 60 hour fasts. Um, number three, third video will be exercise after 50. What will I be doing um, to get fit AF? 
going forward, I'm really liking my new workout program. Number four, stress reduction. Um, my new focus on self-care and what you should be doing too um, to make yourself a priority. And then number five is going to be sleep, how you can get better sleep because every time I do a poll, my audience tells me that they are not getting good sleep and I'm gonna do a whole video on sleep with some really exciting giveaways. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this video was helpful. Make sure you are subscribed and remember, you are just one change away from a better tomorrow. Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope this video was helpful. For those of you who are new, I'm going to attach the uh, link to my keto playlist. There are tons of videos here if you're interested in perusing and poking around and finding some more information on keto. If you have any questions, of course, let me know. You can email me, kelly at kellyalexa.com. Enjoy.